What's up, everybody? It's your favorite sassy Wookiee's favorite nerd. Today, we are looking at the S.H. Figuarts Chewbacca from the Solo film, which I have very mixed feelings about. Let's get started looking at accessories. So he comes with two extra faces. They're both detailed the same, which is nice. They both connect halfway onto the head. The one is a closed face. We had one roaring face in the opening footage, and then we have one with the goggles on. The goggles are nicely done. There's a brown strap that's painted and then the translucent eye goggles and then gunmetal painted around the lens. Three nice options, honestly. Then we have four extra hands in addition to the two fist hands he comes with in the opening footage. One trigger finger hand, one weapon supporting hand, and then two relaxed pose hand. Then he comes with his shotgun, which I think is a super cool weapon, and I think they did a beautiful job on it. We have brown painted on it. We have silver gunmetal. There's black on there. It's like a metallic black. It looks absolutely amazing amazing it's a phenomenal sculpt and he holds it just fine and then we have the figure itself which is fine but there are some issues and the main issue with it in my opinion is the body proportions it's this like inverse hourglass shape it ends up making him look frumpy as my friend adam said or like the grinch that stole christmas the jim carrey version as i said he does come with this floating piece strap, I guess if you want to con uh, consider that an accessory, but uh, I'm not sure that I would. But it is there, and it is nice. It's shaded, which is nice, and then all the buckles are painted silver, and uh, all the little shells and such, the shotgun shells are painted silver, so it looks cool. I don't have any real issue with that. So let's talk about the detailings. It uses the digital face paint application, the dot matrix face paint application, which looks phenomenal. The shading looks great. Much better on this one than the New Hope one, I think. All different shades. of We have like three different shades of brown being used on the fur. And then at the head, you have multiple different shades and variations. And it ends up looking good. And they use the same sort of technique, which always does feel like the, the Wookiee head is sitting so much over top of this belt loop. It's just how they've kind of chosen to hide the idea that it's a uh, you know that the strap is underneath some of the fur and give you the articulation of the head so it's one of those trade-off things you have to decide whether or not that's worth it to you articulation wise we can look at this because this is how we swap the head out so it's a double ball peg basically that connects to this socket into this socket in the neck and then the neck is on a single as well which gives you a fair amount of range however with the face on it is a little bit more limiting but far better than any other option that we have. So you can get up to there, you lose some of the sculpt because of the neck fur, down to there, side to side. So you confuse dog look, which actually makes a little bit of sense here. So all of it works okay. It doesn't look the best, but it doesn't really look the worst either. We have a ball hinge for the, sh actually it's a disc hinge, pardon me, for the shoulder that goes into a ball peg into the torso. And then we have two flaps that cover down on the joint. And it does a pretty good job, especially if you have it up and close to the body. If you don't, you will see the joint. But for articulation, it does get you all the way up to there, all the way around, and then forward and back a bit as well. So you shouldn't have any issues. We have a bicep swivel that is hidden well by the fur, I think. And then a ball hinge elbow that gets you a little bit past 90 degrees. And then the wrist we'll take a look at, typical ball hinge, so you can get up, down, swivel the ball hinge, swivel the wrist, and get in and out. No issues. For the upper body, it looks like we have a double ball peg here, but I think that's it. Usually we have a double and then another single. It's just the double here, but it should get you what you need, which is over to there, back to there, side to side, swivel, etc. And then we have the hips which have this swiveling piece to hide the joint, which is nice. And then T-jointed ball joints, which get you forward and back to there, so the full Monty. Out to there for, for not the full Van Dam, but it's pretty good. And then a swivel. The, the ball pegs do not drop down as a heads up. We have a double jointed knee. The fur is sculpted on the knee joint throughout, so that's nice to hide what they can. Obviously, you can't hide it all given the dynamics of the figure. And then we have the feet. So once again, I think they're pretty well hidden. I think it's a double ball peg. I can't entirely be, I think it is. Looks like it to me. Actually, it, it looks like it's a ball peg to a disc hinge to another peg. So you get an ankle tilt down to there, up to there, a toe hinge, 
and then a pretty decent rocker and then the nails are all painted so it's it's a well detailed figure it's a well styled figure i think they did the best they could with the proportions my only issue is how narrow the upper body seems and then how wide the this lower body seems here which is it does have a tendency to make him look like the grinch that stole christmas so there he is with the new hope one from sh fig Arts, and i i have to admit i think they did make him just ever so slightly taller which is nice it's slight, it's subtle, but I think they did. Also, I was gonna swap bandoliers on them, but this one is glued to his shoulder on the New Hope version. So, you know, it's you, it's not like you can't get around it, but just be aware of it. And then there he is with the Hasbro Target exclusive. And it's a trade-off. I like the size of the Hasbro one better. I think the, the face sculpt is pretty decent on the Hasbro one. I like the browns a lot better on the SH Fig Arts, but I like the proportions a lot better on the Hasbro one. I like how the goggles are hidden in the fur on the Fig Wars one, but I like the option that you can put it on his forehead for the Hasbro one. So there's a lot to, to talk about here and there's a lot to kind of think about as a collector and, and make a decision based on what your preferences are or be ridiculous like me and get both. My main negatives here are the proportions and the shape of the chest to waist scenario. Everything else to me is forgivable. Like the way that the fur has to sit over top of some of the elements of the engineering or the bandolier, etc. Like to me, that's just the cost of doing business with a figure based on a character that has this type of design. I will say like you can get him into a lot of phenomenal action poses, which I find challenging with a lot of Chewbacca figures. And I think they did a great job with the paint and sculpt, which I also think is often a challenge with Chewbacca figures. So it's a recommend from me if you're interested in this representation of the character, but I'm not sure that you'll find it all that much more worth it than the Hasbro one, although I would have to admit that I do. So I hope that helps in some capacity. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Until next time, take care.